Now that Mubarak is gone, uh, we were left with the military running the place. And uh, the Egyptian people, Egypt is kind of a cursed country. Everybody has tried to invade it at some point. So when it comes down to the military, a lot of the Egyptians are hard believers that we need to maintain it and don't want to actually attack the military institution because they believe that those are people who are protecting us. Those are also the same people who have stalled the revolution and have uh, made everything very, very slow for the past nine months and actually have attacked revolutionaries and started military trials for civilians and uh, most recently uh, killed Coptic protesters at Maspiro, killed Christian protesters in Maspiro. So um, I'm not sure that as long as they are in power and challenged that the country has any real future until they die or get removed. I truly believe that this is also the battle of generations. Uh, everybody in the Supreme Council of Armed Forces are all like 60 and above. So they're not necessarily a revolutionary institution. The military is not a democratic institution by principle. <laughs> so having it oversee democratic transition is just ridiculous. You think about it. But uh, you're caught in the catch-22 of all times with the police, you know, refusing to do their job. You cannot take out the military, and then you'll be left with a serious vacuum when it comes to security. If, uh, what I would like to see in 10 years, what I expect is, uh, next two years of just utter chaos, continuous, that they have intended it to be this way. They have uh, wanted to ensure that there would be a divided parliament, and a constitution that would allow them to have complete autonomy over their affairs which cannot be allowed in its civilian uh, overview. And uh, <coughs> basically uh, weaken the trust of people in the idea of democracy. That's, that's their plan. Uh, 